time. And then he cornered me and said, you had a really good childhood, except for a few things. <laughs> he said to me, I didn't know what he was talking about. But after that point, I couldn't keep the lid on what had actually happened anymore. I finally put it together. I had gone therapist after therapist after therapist. They had no idea what was wrong with me. I had a few insinuate I was crazy, um, which was my greatest fear. I really thought I was crazy. And um, it finally came together to me. And in one moment, I realized that I had been molested by my father. And um, at that point, you know, it was like a dam broke. Where I was really suffering before, I was now flooded. I had never processed a single memory, a single incident of being sexually assaulted by him. And all of a sudden now I had, I had all of it and I, I was just flooded, I, you know, with terror. Terror was probably the primary thing I felt from the sexual assaults. So, and then as the book goes into uh, a lot of the techniques I used to try to recover. So. Right. I, uh, in chapter 26, you say it's, the title is The Devastating Truth. You say it all swirled in my head until it suddenly stopped. In one instant, it all came together for me. I realized, to my horror, the sexual abuse rang true. My list of symptoms would make sense in the context of sexual abuse. Was this the missing puzzle? And I think when I've read those words, Carol, I have to tell you, I was taken aback because I felt like it was a missing puzzle for me, too. Um, in my own story, very much the same. It, it starts when I'm three, my father rapes me, what, you know, until I leave his home and I get married at 18 because I can't wait to get out. But it's the missing puzzle and the amnesia that comes with it, or it's a gift to us. And you said so many things, it's hard for me to even stop and know where to begin. But I think many people have this list of symptoms, but they don't have the answer. It's this missing piece. And Many people won't delve into those missing pieces, but talk a little bit about kind of what pushed you into, you say, I felt the same way, actually, when the murder memory came back, I felt like I was going to lose my mind. And I had to call um, this lady I was seeing and she said, Jody, you're making it harder on yourself by not going back into that room. And and she walked yeah. me through that memory. What What led up to, what did that boiling pot look like for you? Because I like to talk about I'm not going insane, but a memory's trying to break through. What did that look like? Yeah, very good point. Um, and and I, I think that we need to um, put a cover over all of this as these are PTSD symptoms. Yes. I had no clue, you know, these panic attacks, these strange fears, this going crazy feeling was all part of post-traumatic stress and what we now call complex post-traumatic stress because there's many incidences in there. Uh, and I think for me, uh, part of it is feeling shut down, feeling like I have tremendous emotion that's that's kind of swirling around and um, maybe flashes of what I'm going to mm -hmm. remember. Uh, it's, it's a very lonely, difficult place you know um and yes. i did eventually learn that meant a memory was trying to emerge um, right see i think that that's so um profound in that we think that all these things that are going on in our mind are kind of crazy like where are they coming from and i have people talk to me about i saw this one thing but it can't be true and i don't know what it is and i always say your mind doesn't make that kind of stuff up. Go with that memory. But, yeah. you know, we they call it amnesia and it is. But the truth is, it, is it's with us always, right? Like yeah. I knew, even though I didn't know that a murder occurred in a motel room, I knew all of my life I had been in a motel room with my dad and Craig. I believed that they had just molested us or, you know, sexually abused us. But I learned later it's different. So with the amnesia, though, there comes this list of symptoms that I think it's really important to recognize, like you said, this is PTSD. So 
even though we've blocked it, it never stays away a hundred percent. Would you agree no. with that? Absolutely. Absolutely. It's with us. And I actually did quite a bit of research into how this happens. And uh, I oh, talk about more, that. Yeah. I go in more detail in my book. Um, and again, a lot of amnesia is, is from very young, severe mm -hmm. trauma. So when you hear somebody talking about they have no memory, they've probably had very severe things happen to them. But during these things, you're so terrified, you're letting out a ton of chemicals, cortisol, and um, things that are going to speed up your heartbeat to where you could die from it. And so you have so Absolutely. much going on, your body releases another chemical to counteract it so you survive and they think it's that chemical that puts it into the uh, base of your brain um which is really it, it that's a whole subject in and of itself mm -hmm. it's very interesting but they have figured out why we do this and what's actually going on it's of course, a protective mechanism. Right. It's a gift. Uh, it's a gift, right? It's a gift. When, when you're going through it, it's a gift. It's a gift, right. Yes. Um, and so, but it's, yeah, it's always there. And like they say now with all the vagal nerve studies that they're doing, this is in your, in your whole body, the trauma, it stays. And we know that, you know, I knew something was horribly wrong. Mm -hmm. I had no idea what it was, but it was there. It was always simmering there. Right. So, and, you know, Carol, one of the things I think that's so important for us that have lived through this is to understand what our body did, right? It's very hard for our minds to grapple with the the effects of this trauma. And so it does make us feel crazy. I often had the vision of this woman that was murdered coming to me. And I'd go to my counselor and say, I feel like it, her spirit's haunting me. And he would say to me, tell me where you saw her. And when we talked it through, I realized she was walking down towards the chair I was sitting in. But if he hadn't explained it to me, I felt like I was, not only was I terrified that my mind was betraying me, but I was terrified like these spirits were getting me until I understood what my mind was doing. And so I love that you really go into why, I mean, it does matter to survivors what our mind and body has done to help us, right? right. The body keeps the score and it's like it holds these parts for us until we can get back. So I, uh, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, you, no, you go right ahead. Well, I, yeah. And I, you know, it's like, why do we remember when we do? Right. And I do think it's, I felt safe enough. I had a, a stable yes. relationship. Mm -hmm. I had my children and I knew, you know, I had vowed in high school, I would never let my children feel what I felt, mm -hmm. even though I didn't even know what it was from. But I had a real, real strong feeling of that, that my children would never go through what I did. And I think you know, at some point I must have by 36 felt safe enough in my life mm -hmm. that I could handle it. Um, I agree with you on that. I, I think that we do know we do have to be in a safe environment and then we have to have the right questions being asked. Even when your father brought up molestation, mm -hmm. that triggered something in you. Those are triggers that happen. And, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden it almost is like he gave you permission, right? Because mm -hmm. I wrote this one blog about whose story are you telling because we grow up telling the story that they taught us. We don't ever tell our own story until we do, right? Mm -hmm. Right, right. It's their narrative that yes. you know, family with great curb appeal. Like, and my father has said that, well, I gave you so much, you know? Right. And, and those are bribery things as well, aren't they? You know, um, I know I write about in my book where my father sends me two $20 bills. When you're first married, you're broke, right? Yeah. And you know what I knew in my heart? I didn't have all my memories, but I knew he was bad. And I took those $20 bills in the bathroom and burned them because I didn't want any part of his bribery anymore. And I felt crazy doing it, but I had to be free. Does that, yeah. you know, and so when your father would send these things to you, or I'm going to not let you be the executor of my estate, yeah. he was telling you, I'm I'm actually going to reject you more if you don't keep telling my story and keep that curb appeal alive, right? Yes. And it was, it was very interesting. My father, um, 
kind of held it together with me and my relationship. He he acted pretty normal until my mother mm -hmm. died. Mm 